My guest tonight is the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, whose new book is called Lessons from the Edge. Please welcome Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch. For the, for the folks who did not hear me talking about you at the, at the top of the last act, uh, they might remember you as uh, someone from the first impeachment of the former president. Impeachment classic, we call it. <laughs> but there you are giving testimony at the impeachment right there. And you, you served as ambassador to Ukraine from 2016 to 2019. Uh, Kiev was your home. You worked alongside the Ukrainian people. As you've looked at the last two weeks, yeah. uh, this, this, this monstrous war that's been launched, what are your thoughts, uh, not only what's happening, but, but of the Ukrainian people? Yeah. Well, it's hard to believe that it's only been two weeks, right? I mean, there's the before two weeks ago and then the after period. And um, I've just been devastated. And I, I think that's a word that's been overused in the last couple of weeks, but it's, um, it's the accurate one to describe my, my feelings because I feel like everybody I know in Ukraine has a target on their back, that um, Putin is going in and indiscriminately killing women, children. We saw pregnant women yesterday when there was a bombing in Mariupol of mm -hmm. the maternity hospital. So it's, it's, it's been pretty tough to, to watch and to try to support and um, uh, be in touch with people in Ukraine. But this is really about them. And um, the courage that they are showing that they will not allow uh, an autocrat to come into their country and dictate how they're going to live, no matter what the cost. I mean, it's been... You still have contacts in I Ukraine. Did. What are you hearing from them? Uh, but what do they want us to know? Well, I brought my phone. And let me just read uh, a text that I uh, got today from a friend who is uh, in the parliament. And it's a little long. I hope you'll bear with me. But this is direct from the Ukrainian people. Uh, we are outnumbered and outgunned in front of the aggressor. We lack air defense, anti-rocket, anti-tank systems, and basic protection gear for our military. We are increasingly threatened with chemical and tactical nuclear attacks. But with resolve, courage, and dedication to protect our motherland, our freedoms, and the rights we believe in, Ukrainian society is standing up to this barbaric terrorist war. We will fight till the last bullet and the last person, but we are pleading to the free world, that's all of us, to help us, defend the values that the free world shares to stop this apocalypse. God help us and God bless America. Straight from Ukraine. I am from uh, the generation like you are, where the idea of there being a free world in opposition to an autocratic world was an everyday part of the conversation, right. certainly in political conversations or foreign right. policy conversations. Are you surprised we're back where we are right now? In some ways, I am. But in, in other ways, having watched Putin over you know, the last uh, 20 years or so, uh, not so surprised. He's had an obsession with Ukraine He's made uh, over the years. He has made clear that he, as you noted, doesn't believe that there are, is, is a distinct Ukrainian people or that there is a nation uh, that deserves to have a state. Um, and uh, recently, he's also noted that he thinks that the Soviet Union or the Russian Empire should be reconstituted. So if Putin isn't stopped now, I think he will continue to go on, because that's what the history has shown us. Georgia in 2008. Ukraine in 2014, and Ukraine again in 2022. If he's not stopped, he'll keep on going. But the other thing is that he um, has made clear that uh, the international rules-based order, which is also something familiar to our generation, um, kind of a system that was set up after World War II uh, for the rules of the road for how countries deal with each other, that that doesn't really work for him. He wants to be in a might makes right situation, get whatever he wants. And that is a real threat, I think, to the free world because the rules-based international system has kept us freer, 
more prosperous and more secure since World War II. And um, if Putin prevails, uh, I think we're going to see uh, a, a system that could very well have autocrats deciding what kind of rules we live by. And that would not be good for the United States. Your, your new book is called Lessons from the Edge. And in, in 2019, you yourself were the victim of a smear campaign. Rudolf Giuliani told the former president that you blocked efforts to get Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden, and you were then fired. Later, the July 25th call revealed that the president pressured Ukraine for those investigations by withholding military aid. How is all of that related to this war? Well, I think that what, um, what everybody saw with the, uh, the release of that, the transcript of what we now know is the perfect call, um, I think what we see is that Putin, like other autocrats around the world, and frankly, other bad actors around the world and in the United States, they realized that um, the former president was ready to um, use our national security for his own personal and political gain. You'll recall the phrase, um, you know, can you do me a favor, though? Yes. Um, so clearly the quid pro quo was there. And I think that really undermined um, our national security and our, um, our abilities to move forward when people could see that the President of the United States was ready to, you know, um, not be acting in the interests of the nation but in his own personal best interests. One of the things that Joe Biden has had to do in his first year is to patch our NATO alliance, mm -hmm. to let them know that we are committed and make That's sure right. that everybody else is committed. Putin wanted to undermine that. Yes. This war, of course, has brought NATO together in, in a show of strength that they, they haven't, um, probably since the Bosnian conflict. Right. Um, Many politicians in the United States on the right continue to support the, the previous president, and strangely, at times, Vladimir Putin himself. How does that strange fealty to autocratic tendencies undermine our position with our allies and our standing in the world? Well, I think, I think people really wonder what is, what is going on here in the United States. What when is it, going on here <laughs> in the United States? I wish I knew and could tell you that's not one of the lessons. <laughs> uh, but it's... Um, it, it's, it's, it's worrisome that people would hold up Putin as a strong man and, and as somebody to be admired and emulated, people who should know better. Well, hopefully this will strip the mask off of him and people will have to face the horror that autocratic regimes are. That's what I hope as well, um, although it's coming at a very, very high cost, especially for Ukraine. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask the ambassador about the first time she met President Zelensky. Stick around.